Welcome back to the channel everyone. Season 9 for Project Diablo 2 came out, so we have been grinding that and taking a break from Tarkov. For those that don't know, Project Diablo 2 is a Diablo 2 LOD original mod, not D2R, and there are new Pandemonium events at the endgame. The D-Clone Pandemonium event is still in the game, but the fight's very different from uh, the original. And it is still how you get the Annie Charm, which is plus one skills, all res, vitality, and energy. So I figured I would make a quick guide. Uh, we'll get right into it. And if you haven't already, please follow the channel, like the video. Um, every little bit helps. Every character has a build or multiple builds that can do declone. It really depends on your preference for playstyle for what you're going to go with. I prefer either a Holy Sword Paladin because they have max block. They're tanky, it's easy to max out reses, or a Hydra Sork, um, because you can plant a Hydra, it's on auto fire, and you can run around and avoid damage. The community would argue that a Fury Druid is the best for all Ubers, but I never play it, I'm not comfortable with it, so really pick something that you know well and you're comfortable with the playstyle. Survivability is the name of the game. You're not gonna dodge every attack, so you have to max out your fire and light res. Coal can be as high as you can get it. You need 50 physical damage reduction, about 1600 life, and an inventory of full rejuves. There are three phases to the fight, each one lasting about a third of his life. And each phase is made up of three parts. The damage part, then there is the skelly part, and then there's the cold wave part. I will highlight each phase and part of the fight during the video. Now let's go over the gear and skills. Starting us off is a pair of mage fists which add to fire skills and has an all rest corruption. Next we have a three skill Ashutas with a fire facet in it for extra damage. Next we have a dark glow which adds to all maximum resistances as well as slamming for extra light res to help us hit that 90 there. Next, we have a Crown of Ages, which helps with physical damage reduction and it's slammed for extra maximum fire res. Then we have a basic Talos Ami. It could use an upgrade, but it does provide two to skills and some life. Then we have a Storm Shield, which provides physical damage reduction, some reses, and two sockets with arms for extra resistances. Then we have a pair of Water Walks, which roll with maximum fire res and slammed for extra max lightning res. Then we have a Raven Frost, which provides cannot be frozen as well as some cold absorb uh, for the cold waves. Next, we have a Verdungos, which also provides physical damage reduction, gets us to 50, and provides a ton of vitality for life. Next, we have a Nature's Peace, which provides more maximum all resistances. Then we have a bunch of small charms with life. They range anywhere from 17 to 20. We have a collection of fire skillers. Some of them are plain and some of them have life on them. And finally, we have a torch, which provides two to skills as well as some reses. As you can see, this is a pretty bad torch. And as you can see, we have max fire res, uh, mostly max lightning res, just enough strength to equip our equipment and then everything else into vitality for as much life as we can get. Skills is pretty straightforward. Max Hydra, all their synergies, as well as Fire Mastery with some extra points into Warmth, and then just a couple points into Teleport to reduce the mana cost, and that's it. And the last thing to remember is that it is a tough fight. You might make a couple mistakes. There's not a lot of room for error, so just, you know, if you lose one, don't worry about it. On to the next. Okay. The fight starts with the damage phase. This is part two of the phase one where he raises skeletons. You basically want to kite them around and continue casting hydras to damage them. So After you kill the final skelly, you can damage him again, so there's a small damage phase uh, to get you to the third part. 
For part three, he sprints to the middle to start his cold waves. So you want to be able to get to the bottom left corner of the map and stand behind the pillar to not get hit by them. They hurt a lot. Make sure you wait for the last cold wave to pass before going into phase two and the damage part. Basically, this cycle repeats two more times and I'll let you watch it from here. Oh shit. I mean, fuck that. I forgot, I forgot to grab the Raven Frost. I'm like, why am I cold? One's not the smoothest. So, what else? And that is all she wrote. Uh, you'll hear a big sigh of relief because it is a stressful few minutes. The annie rolled terribly, so I will be doing it again. I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe.